morning. It's a real pleasure to welcome you to the Seafood Futures Forum. I keep thinking there's a sustainable in there, but maybe that's what we're going to debate. Given um, all of the competing demands on your time at this busy show, I really do appreciate you all getting here before the show opens to join us. Um, and as Stephen has just said, there's over 300 people registered to join us online. Um, registration, we've looked at the, the mix of um, uh, people joining us. We've got harvesters, processors, retailers, food service, NGOs, and media. And I think that very much reflects the MSC multi-stakeholder model that we're very committed to. I'd like to take this opportunity as well. I, I can't actually see anything, but Verna Kina, uh, MSC's Chair of Trustees, is in the audience somewhere. I don't know, Verna, if you can stand up. At least I hope you're in the audience. There we are, at the back. Um, MSC invests a huge amount in governance. I think it underpins the trust and credibility of the program. We have an international board of trustees, 15 individuals, and, and hardwired into the DNA are two seats for the industry, two seats for the market, two seats for scientists, and two seats for NGOs. Again, reflecting that balance and that multi-stakeholder model. We have a technical advisory board made up of leading experts in fisheries science uh, and supply chain uh, integrity and traceability. And we also have a stakeholder council, um, a stakeholder advisory council has recently been um, uh, sort of recalibrated. We had our inaugural meeting just last week. And again, the membership of that group reflects our multi-stakeholder model with the balance between industry and NGOs. And in fact, we have several members of our stakeholder council uh, in the room. I don't know if you want to stand up and show where you are. Don't be shy. <laughs> Um, and we also have members from our technical advisory board as well. So I, I mention all of that, as well as um, MSC staff from across Europe and, um, and America as well, and Asia. And so please do join us afterwards if there are any more questions you want to go through with MSC. So it definitely feels like a moment in time for the oceans. Uh, the United Nations hosted the inaugural Oceans Conference for the UN, the headquarters in New York uh, last summer in June 17. Uh, in October, the EU hosted uh, the latest Our Oceans Conference in Malta. And just in March of this year, The Economist hosted their fifth World Oceans Summit. I mean, without doubt, uh, oceans are on the map. They're on the political map. And I also think, you know, fueled by outstanding programs like Blue Planet 2, uh, more media interest, that the oceans are becoming a much more public issue. You know, people care deeply and a particular resonance around, around the issue of plastics. So, are our oceans in trouble? I think they are. Um, you look at the impacts of acidification and climate change, devastating coral reefs, and some of the facts and figures that are being talked about are, are really troubling. Um, I'm not a reefs expert, but I understand that business as usual, if, if we cannot keep warming below two degrees, will mean something like 70 or 80 percent of warm water reefs will be gone, and there's very little we can do about that. Um, climate change impacts are already impacting on MSC certified fisheries. Fish migration patterns are changing, uh, reproductive health is being impacted, and a number of MSC fisheries have lost their certificate uh, as fish have, have changed um, uh, their migration patterns. We're also told that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Now, I have no idea how accurate those figures are, but when you think we produce 280 million tonnes of plastic every year, much of it for single use, uh, and estimates of 8 to 12 um, million tonnes hitting the oceans every year, it's hard to see how we would get up to that statistic. Um, and in relation to fisheries, a third of global fish stocks, assessed stocks, are now classified as overfished. Now, that's a threefold increase since the 1970s. So I think it's fair to say, at the very least, our oceans are under huge stress and pressure. And particularly at a time that we're moving from 7 billion people on this planet to 10 billion people and, and a desperate need uh, to get more sustainable, low-carbon protein. So. Actually, just sorry, one other fact that I found quite amazing. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change has estimated that by 2020, it's going to cost $100 billion every year, each and every year, to mitigate the effects of a degraded ocean. So I think now really is the time uh, for action. 
And despite the trends uh, and the scale of the challenges, I'm actually an optimist. I, I think many of you who know me know that I'm an optimist, and you have to be an optimist to run the MSC, because uh, it can be challenging on occasion. But my optimism stems from the fact that we now have the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals to end poverty, protect the planet, and to ensure prosperity for all. A route map to try and move us from, in many senses, an unsustainable system of production and a rather inequitable one to a more sustainable and more equitable system of production and consumption. Um, I think what's so enormous about the SDGs is that this, this plan for planet Earth has been signed by 193 nations. Uh, and we have a dedicated oceans target, SDG 14, Life Below the Ocean, with 10 separate goals that seek to conserve and sustainably use the seek to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources. And I think that resonates particularly for MSC, because MSC is primarily about sustainable resource use within ecological limits. We care passionately about ocean health and resilience and biodiversity. We care passionately about the livelihoods and the ability to generate sustainable seafood supplies into the future. So there's never been a better time, given all of this attention, given this route map, to galvanize action to improve the health of our oceans. And I think it's really appropriate today that we're going to be reflecting on what this means for the MSC. We're 20 years old, but, but what does it mean? What's our place through your continued engagement and leadership to contribute to delivery of the SDG targets? So I'm very much looking forward to our keynote speaker, Ali Dingwall, and to the panel discussion and to hearing your views in the question and answer session. Um, one last comment. Clearly, there's an absolute urgency to all of this. Um, four of the SDG 14 goals are due to be delivered by 2020, you know, barely two years away. Those include ending overfishing, eradicating IUU, um, banning harmful subsidies and effectively regulating harvesting. Uh, I think the SDG framework is uh, singly ambitious uh, and it's also very, very obvious that there's no silver bullet uh, to these challenges. It's going to need partnership and collaboration. It's going to need public policy reform. It's going to need advocacy, awareness raising, and I also believe credible market-based programs to help to get those signals right and incentivize um, the right sort of behavior to take us in that direction.